From the shores of the Mediterranean to the edge of the Arctic Circle, Europe is blessed with a vast range of plants and animals. Although much of this biodiversity is natural, there's also a large variety of domestic animals and cultivated plants, which has been developed by Europe's farmers interacting with nature throughout history. This rich diversity of plants and animals is immensely valuable to humankind, as around 40% of our global economy is based on biological products and processes. It's now recognized that safeguarding biodiversity is essential to human well-being, to our livelihoods, cultural integrity, and indeed our very survival as a species. Yet this wealth of biodiversity is under threat as a result of human activity. Globally, some 16,000 species of flora and fauna are threatened with extinction, and Europe is no exception. But now action is being taken to reverse this trend. The EU supports efforts to protect Europe's very own big cat, the Iberian lynx, just one example of European commitment to halting the loss of biodiversity by 2010. We are part of an ecosystem. We need nature. Uh, and uh, we have to protect nature and the different species and habitats. It's important economically because people are also dependent on what nature gives, food, medicines, uh, all of that, but also for emotional and ethical reasons uh, because nature gives us inspiration and what would uh, uh, art be without nature. And for ethical reasons, we don't have the right to extinct uh, different, make uh, different species extinct. Europe already has responsibility for the conservation of threatened species as a signatory to the UN Convention on Biodiversity, the Bern, Ramsar and other conventions. But biodiversity is important not only for its own sake, but for the goods and services derived from it on which we all depend. Protecting biodiversity is essential if we are to safeguard our future. C'est pas seulement pour nous protéger dans l'avenir. C'est maintenant. Euh, il se trouve que les espèces disparaissent avec une vitesse croissante. Si une espèce disparaît, c'est grave, c'est comme un tableau qui disparaît. Mais la disparition d'un tableau ne fait pas disparaître l'art. Par contre, une espèce qui disparaît, on le voit. Mais ce qu'on ne voit pas, c'est la disparition de toutes les interactions qu'elle entretenait avec les autres espèces. Et la vitesse aujourd'hui de ces disparitions est tellement rapide que l'on peut craindre deux choses que la vie ne s'adapte pas à cette vitesse, et deuxièmement, que les disparitions d'interactions soient tellement importantes que ce qui reste s'écroule. Et si le, le réseau du vivant s'écroule, comme nous sommes dans ce réseau, nous nous écroulerons avec. Ces interactions, elles vont nous être nécessaires à tous les niveaux. Une vache ne fait pas du fromage, la vache produit du lait. Mais ce lait ne pourra devenir du fromage que parce que nous avons des micro-organismes, des bactéries ou des levures qui vont nous permettre de transformer ce lait en fromage. Et, et si elle a pu faire du lait, c'est parce qu'elle a mangé une bonne herbe. Et cette herbe, si elle a pu l'obtenir, c'est parce que dans le sol, il y a des micro-organismes qui rendent le sol fertile et qui permettent à la vache d'avoir de la bonne herbe. Cette bonne herbe, avec des micro-organismes dans les estomacs, va donner du bon lait et ainsi de suite jusqu'au fromage. Au milieu de cela, il y a les humains qui ont géré le système. Et les humains ne sont donc pas dehors de la biodiversité, comme beaucoup de gens le croient, ils sont dedans. Donc protéger la diversité biologique, c'est aussi nous protéger. Two regions in Europe, the Caucasus and the Mediterranean Basin, are particularly rich in species diversity, and some of the last remaining wilderness in the northern hemisphere is also partly found in Europe, like the Tiger Forest. Prospects for survival are mixed. Some previously highly threatened species are starting to recover, while others continue to decline at alarming rates, generally as a result of the disappearance or degradation of their habitats. Europe's heritage of people and culture has left us with a rich variety of domestic animals. Almost half of the world's domestic breeds are found in Europe. However, trends towards agricultural industrialization are threatening the survival of many traditional breeds nearly half of them are at risk of extinction. But Europe is also the region where the highest proportion of domestic breeds is under active conservation. Species-rich agricultural habitats have also declined considerably because of changes in farm management. This affects not just domestic breeds, but also wild species of plants and animals which depend for their survival on natural and diverse habitats.
wetlands have been particularly affected as they've been drained for modern agriculture or as a result of industrialization and urbanization. But now many countries have successfully implemented policies and action plans to preserve and protect wetland areas. Wetland losses due to changes in economic conditions are likely to be higher now than they have been over the past three decades. However, each member state has a duty of care to put in place action plans to preserve and protect these wetland areas. These sites, together with those protected under the BIRDS Directive, now in its 25th year and one of the most powerful legislative instruments, form Natura 2000 Network, one of the cornerstones of European conservation policy. More than half the sites in the Natura 2000 network of protected areas are forests, and development of sustainable forestry management is a prime example of how concern for biodiversity is becoming more integrated into sector policies. If one time forestry thought it was sustainable in so far as we aimed for, foresters aimed for sustained yield, uh, what that meant was for every tree cut down, two trees or three trees were, were planted, so that the yield, the timber yield was, uh, remained the same throughout the centuries. Whereas nowadays sustainability has taken on a broader meaning. Uh, you have to balance uh, commercial concerns, environmental concerns and social concerns. In a sense, a person may regard the forest and a person may regard the tree species as the living room, for want of a better term, for biodiversity. So a different species type, a Sitka spruce, will, will, will support one type of biodiversity. There's less obvious biodiversity on the forest floor. Broadleaves may be a living room for another type of biodiversity. In Scots pine um, it may be a living room, uh, especially the crowns of Scots pine may be a living room for uh, things like grey squirrels and seed eaters and things like that. So as far as uh, species selection then, when we come on to plant new forests, uh, it's vital to match species, the right tree in the right place, uh, to match the, uh, the species of tree with the site and with the site's requirements as well. When you have a stream, you have two habitats meeting in a sense. You have the aquatic habitat, you have the, la you have the land habitat, and you have the habitat in between, the riparian, the riparian habitat. So uh, uh, you, get, you get three habitats for the price of one. Uh, streams are like veins in, in a body. That, uh, if I inject some poison into, into this vein, it travels throughout the body. If I inject poison into a, into a stream, it travels through the whole water system. So from the, from the pure water quality point of view, it's important to ensure that they're not subject to siltation, that they're not uh, subject to acidification, they're not subject to, to uh, chemicals or anything like that. But from the habitat point of view, it's also important that, uh, that the habitat uh, remains uh, pristine uh, because it's a valu valuable habitat in itself. Europe has a responsibility beyond that of reducing its impact on the ecology of the rest of the world. It must look after its own varied landscapes and habitats and look after the migrant species and those that are threatened within its boundaries. The European Union has set an objective to restore and protect the functioning and structure of natural systems and to halt the loss of biodiversity both at a global and a European level by the year 2010. To do this, it will undertake activities at a national, local and European level and connect up to global activities. A key role of the European Environment Agency is to monitor where we are, to look at trends and to establish assessments of critical issues. In this way, we will help to implement good policies that will protect the varied biodiversity of Europe for present and future generations.